Okay, in this video, we're going to take a look at the concept of physics. So we're going to give objects in the co-space actual real-world properties, or somewhat, somewhat real-world properties. So I'm going to bring out a couple of items. Uh, I'm going to bring out um, something like a block and a sphere, maybe a dome. I think they actually have different names than that, but... That's what I'll call them for now. And I'm going to take a I'm going to take this one. Let's make it make it more like a wall like that. And I'm going to rotate it somewhat like that. I'm going to take the cylinder, turn it on its side. And we'll move it sort of like right there. So we're going to make like a almost like a little seesaw here. Let's see if we can do this. I'll make this one a little bigger. And we're going to put this little guy, make him a tiny bit bigger. Like that. And I'm going to put him on the edge. Something like that. And then we'll use the ball, and we'll raise the ball up into the air. Something like that. I think you get the idea of what I'm about to do. Let's move them over this way a little bit. So without any physics turned on, this is going to look like this. Let's hit play. OK, things are just going to sit in the air and nothing's going to happen. But the minute we start turning physics on for all of these items, and the way you do that is you just double click on an uh, item itself and turn physics on. We'll leave everything sort of set default. We won't change any of those settings. Do the same for the plank. The same for this little ellipsoid half. I'm going to just call it a dome. I'm going to turn physics on, and for the sphere, we'll just call it a ball. We'll turn physics on. Okay, so I think everything's got, let me double check this one. Yeah, everything's got physics on. Let's see, let's see what happens. Okay, so you see the different stuff started happening there because of the, the physics property. So uh, one thing I need to do, I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. Something like that. And that means that guy's got to come up a little bit. Maybe move over. This one moves over. Maybe comes up a little bit. Let's give that a try. Okay. There we go. And now, once we know that it works, we can start changing a little bit of the physics. So, for example, I can make this one with a mass of, let's say, two units. Don't know what those are. Oh, kilograms, two kilograms. And I'll make this one with a mass of 10 kilograms. And let's see if that changes the way these react. Boom. Yeah, so now when one has much greater mass than the other, the reaction is more pronounced like that. There we go. So you can see how you can get physics involved with uh, with what you have here. Oh, look at look at how I've lined things up horribly. So I can take these and maybe bring it down a little bit. That looks better. This is I'm not too worried about. I don't mind that it bounces. Great. Okay, and if I didn't want this to, uh, if I didn't want the ball to automatically uh, fall down right when I click play. I could actually turn physics off on this one. And then in my code, well, first of all, make sure I turn code on for the ball. And then I can go over to my code and I can create a new code block and I can say something like um, when ball is clicked, I think it's, let's see here. Add physics to ball. 
So when I first start playing, it's not going to do anything. That ball is just going to sit up in the air. But when I click on it, it'll add physics to the ball. So let's test this out. So there you go. These guys are all working. This ball is just sitting there. But I click on them, and now I can make that happen. So this is just some creative ways to add physics to your, your projects and kind of give, give life to the creation that you, you put together.